Hello Year 7, so this is the fifth and final lesson in the series of lessons about Sikhism. So today we're going to look at the five K's. So these are five symbols that um, Sikhs would wear to represent their faith and show what they believe in and they all have sort of a special meaning we're going to go through that a little bit later okay so let's start so before doing anything else the first thing that you're going to do is to recall what you've learned so far about Sikhism so if you can include a keyword to do with Sikhism to fill each space complete a sentence about Sikhism with each word starting with the letters um, S I K H I S M. So accompanying this PowerPoint will be a work booklet. So in the work booklet this question and that series of letters going reading downwards, reading the word Sikhism will be in the work booklet so you'll be able to write directly into that um, a sentence to go with each letter okay so you might want to pause this here now and do that and then come back to the video okay so moving on again a little recap on what we learnt last lesson on Guru Nanak so you've got um, words to fit in the gaps and um, again in the work booklet that accompanies this PowerPoint you will see this. I haven't given you the words, you can look at those on the PowerPoint, but I've given you this, which allows you just to fill in the words. Okay, so again, you might want to stop here, do that bit before moving. Okay, moving on. So, what are the five Ks of Sikhism? There's a video link here. So, if, again, if you're watching, it's not in this video, the link isn't in this video, the link is in the PowerPoint. So you need to go to the PowerPoint, play it as a PowerPoint presentation, and if you click on that um, link, it should take you straight to the YouTube video clip. So watch the clip and make notes in the work booklet. So again, in the work booklet, you've got um, a space for you to write any notes in. Then you've got a starter question or a couple of questions. Do you wear or use any symbols? Can you think of any that we use around school? So is there symbolism in school? Think about your school uniform, on your, particularly on your sweatshirt. What's on there? Is that symbolic? Does that have a special meaning? And then answer, why do we have them? Is it important to have visual objects of faith? So people who believe things, is it important for them to have something that they can look at or see or wear that represents what they believe in. So again, in the work booklet, you've got space to answer those questions. Okay, there isn't a page in the work booklet that corresponds to this. This is just something for you to think about and um, not actually write down. So how many of the symbols can you identify? Why are symbols used instead of words? And what are the weaknesses of just using symbols? So that's just something for you to think about. Okay, so they're called the five K's because they all start with the letter K. So the first one we're going to look at is Kesh, which is uncut hair. So Sikhs believe that hair is a gift from God and so it should be treasured, not wasted. For this reason, many Sikhs avoid cutting their hair and instead, particularly male Sikhs, wear it covered by a turban. In the UK, people who wear a Sikh turban do not need to wear a motorcycle helmet or a police helmet because the turban gives as much protection. So in some situations, they would, um, instead of wearing a helmet or hat, they would wear the turban instead. OK, the cara or steel bangle or bracelet. It's always a full circle bangle to represent the oneness of God, so that circle never ends. It serves as a constant reminder for Sikhs to follow the morals of their faith. Morals are doing the right thing as opposed to the wrong thing. So if you've got good morals, you do the right thing. 
of their so they um, follow the morals of their faith in every part of their life. Steel is considered a really strong material, and so this is also representative of God or stands for God and the Sikh faith in God. So it's supposed to be strong. The Kirpan, the dagger. In their early years, Sikhs had to fight for the right to practice their religion, and so many battles were fought. However, the Kirpan represents fighting for justice for both Sikhs and non Sikhs. It symbolises or stands for a personal duty and responsibility to seek in the message of peace. So even though it's a dagger or a blade, it is a symbol of peace. Kirpans have a safety catch on them, so the user has to think twice before using it. This means they ensure they're only use, using it for the right reasons. So obviously, in this country, if you're carrying a knife, then you could be stopped by the police, or you shouldn't be carrying a dangerous weapon. So sometimes um, Sikhs may either have a blunted version that they would carry in the, in the cover, or sometimes we're going to see another of the Sikh symbols is a phone, and they would have the symbol of the kirpan, the drawing of the kirpan on the cone. So that would um, be acceptable as um, that you have the kirpan on or you're showing that in some way. Kashara, so that's cotton underwear. The kashara is a specific style of cotton underwear that are loose fitting and comfortable. They remind Sikhs of the Guru's message regarding self-control and sexual purity. So the thing about being, um, I suppose, not um, having loads of different relationships, but having sort of a one relationship and having self-control. So they're worn under all other clothing by both men and women. They're just one size, and that idea is that one size fits all, linking to the Sikh belief in equality, so everybody wears them, everybody is equal. So the Kanga, I mentioned this earlier, it's a wooden comb. This is a small wooden comb kept within the turban, so this sort of keeps their hair in place under the turban, and they're able to comb their hair through as well, used for keeping the God-given hair tidy and neat, thereby showing gratitude to God. Looking after one's hair is considered to show appreciation for the God-given gift that Sikhs choose to keep long and tidy. So as I said, sometimes they may have a drawing of the curve plant on the comb and that would be acceptable as two of the five Ks. So there we are, you can see a Sikh man with the, all the different Ks on. So he's got his kara on his wrist, he's wearing the, the shorts. He's got his kirpan there, he's got kesh, which is untrimmed hair, and he's got kanga, which is a comb. You can see a female Sikh there with the turban on. Okay, so, again, the accompanying this PowerPoint is a worksheet for you to fill in. So you're going to name the five Ks. You could put a picture of them in as well if you wish to. Uh, what is it? And what does it symbolise? And do you think it would be easy for a modern day Sikh to have to carry or wear it? So think about the implications of maybe having long hair, having to wear a turban. Think about, I've already mentioned, carrying the kirpan. What problems might that cause? And so for each one, think about how easy or difficult it would be for a modern day Sikh to have to carry or wear that item. And you fill in the columns. Okay, again, going back to the workbooklet, these questions will be in there for you to, and with a space for you to write in your answer. Do you have to wear the 5K to be a good Sikh? So do you think you have to do all those things? Is it still possible to be a good Sikh without them? Are Sikhs who wear the 5Ks better than Sikhs that don't? So what's the advantage of wearing those things? What might be the problems with wearing visible signs of your faith? So, if you've got a turban on, or you've got um, another religious symbol on, if you are a Muslim, or you're so you're if you're a Muslim woman, you're wearing the hijab or the headscarf. If you are a Christian and wearing a cross round your neck, what might be the problems with wearing visible signs of your faith? Have a think about that. Okay, then in the workbook, you've got three different situations 
which might be a problem to Sikhs and you've got to give advice to the Sikh who's having that particular problem because of having to wear the five Ks. So you look at, read through each scenario in the work booklet and then you, there's space for you to write your advice, what you would do or thinking about the problems. And then the last task is to design an item of clothing you could wear to express your own identity. So think about, because that's what the five Ks do, they show a Sikh person's faith and beliefs. So design an item of clothing you could wear to express your own identity. And then write a paragraph underneath your drawing to explain your designs. And again, that's in the workbook, but if you wanted to draw that by hand and then um, perhaps take a photograph of it and email it or set or or something along those lines or perhaps um, if you could copy and paste the photograph onto the page in the workbook you could do that okay and then that's the last task of um, the tasks about the five case so the last bit is just a bit of recap so just for you to look at again I haven't left you space in the workbook for this because you've done these questions as we've gone through so it's just for you to review what you've learnt. Do you know what the five Ks are? Do you know the religious meaning behind them? Why do you think they're important to Sikhs today? And that's the end of that lesson.